the main providers of direct climate finance initiatives? National governments, transnational programs, international agreements, or the private sector? The answer is all of these. Our first example comes from Australia, where in 2012, the Australian government established the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, or the CEFC. The goal of this initiative was to increase flows of finance into the clean energy sector. It represents both an interesting and successful example of a national direct climate finance initiative. The CEFC has access to billions of dollars in potential funding. It invests in renewable energy, energy efficiency, and other low emissions technologies and projects. Unlike other government funding bodies, it functions much like a corporate bank and invests only in projects and technologies that will eventually have a positive return on investment and can therefore repay the funds provided by the CEFC. However, unlike a corporate bank, its investment decisions consider the positive externalities and co-benefits that a project may deliver to society. For example, where a paper recycling plant creates significant employment opportunities for a regional community, the CEFC may accept a lower financial return on its investment. The core investment objective of the CEFC is to support the commercialisation and deployment of clean energy in order to reduce Australia's heavy dependency on fossil fuel-based power. The CEFC's investment portfolio includes solar, bioenergy, ocean energy and wind power, as well as light and heavy vehicle fleet efficiency, paper recycling and air conditioner upgrades. The CEFC generally provides funding via project finance and corporate loans. Project finance is typically provided to large-scale clean energy projects and requires debt and equity to be paid back solely from the revenue generated by the project. For example, revenue could include the sale of electricity to the grid. Corporate loans, on the other hand, fund organisations as a whole that have a demonstrated track record in delivering a portfolio of clean energy projects. These loans are repaid from the organisation's general cash flow. Further to this, the CEFC operates a leveraged finance model, attracting capital investment from the private sector and the CEFC's strategic co-financing partners, such as the National Australia Bank. This means that for every $1 invested by the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, it raises an additional $1.80 from commercial investors. So when you look at it this way, that means this initiative is able to almost triple its impact. As of 2016, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation has invested $1.4 billion Australian dollars in clean energy projects, worth over $3.5 billion in value. These projects are expected to reduce emissions by 77 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent over their combined lifetimes. To put that in perspective, that's equivalent to taking 16.4 million cars off the road for one year. The economic merits of the CEFC are also noteworthy, with the investment portfolio expected to yield 6.1% interest annually. In addition to the economic returns delivered through the CEFC's investments, the initiative receives annual funding from the Australian Government. Historically, much of the Government's funding came from the sale of auction allowances under the Australia's now defunct emissions training scheme. Integrating direct climate finance with a carbon pricing policy represents an ideal economic model where the polluter, not the taxpayer, funds the transition to a low carbon economy. Australia's Clean Energy Finance Corporation shows us what direct climate finance can look like at a national scale. But we know that the flows of climate finance are often global in nature. So, how can policies and programs facilitate transnational and cooperative investment in climate change mitigation and adaptation? We'll find out in the next two videos, where we explore case studies on the Green Climate Fund and REDD Plus initiatives.